call upon our King. Blessed are the people who know the sound of the shofar. In the light of your countenance, so Yahweh shall they walk. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu, Melech HaOlam, Esher Kitshiyanu B'Mistotov Etzivanu, Lish Moach Shofar. Blessed are you, O Yahweh Elohim, King of the universe, who sanctified us by your commandments and has commanded us to hear the voice of the shofar. <laughs> And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbaths ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that ye may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kivod Malchuto Leolam Va Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. Be'ahavta et Yahweh Elochecha Bechol levavcha Uvchol nafshecha Uvchol meodecha Ve'hayu hadavarim ha'ele Asher anochi mitzvcha yom al-lebevecha Ve'shinan tam levenecha Ve'dibarta ba'am be'shivtecha be'vetecha Uv'lechtecha v'derech Uv'shach b'cha uv'ikomecha Uksartam leot al yadecha, vehayu let hodavot ben anecha, uktavtam al mezuzot betecha, uvisharecha, vehaftal reha kamocha. You shall love Yahweh your Elohim with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. These words which I am commanding you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. And shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontals on your forehead. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. All right. Tesher's going to lead us in our prayer. So if everyone would point your hand toward the treasure chest. Abba, open their eyes to receive your truth in Yeshua's name. Amen. And everyone say, by his grace, not one will be lost. Amen. May Yahweh protect and defend you. May he always shield you from shame. May you come to be in Israel a shining day. May you be like Ruth and Ephraim. May you be deserving of praise. Strengthen them, O oh Yah, and keep them from the strangers. May I bless you and grant you long life. May we fulfill our Sabbath prayer for you. 
May I make you good husbands and wives. Give your children who will care for you. May Yahweh protect and defend you. May Yahweh preserve you His way. Favor them, O oh Yah, with happiness and peace. O oh, hear our Sabbath prayer. Amen. Praise Him with the symbol, praise Him with the dance, praise Him with the shofar, praise Him with your hands, praise Him with the timbrel, praise Him with the harp, praise Him with the drum and the flute, praise Him with your heart, hallelujah, Adonai, hallelujah, Adonai, hallelujah, Adonai. Come and praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Adonai, hallelujah. Adonai, hallelujah. Adonai. Come and praise the Lord. Praise Him with the cymbals. Praise Him with the dance. Praise Him with the shofar. Praise Him with your hand. Praise Him with the timbrel. Praise Him with the harp. Praise Him with the drum and the flute. Praise Him with your heart. Hallelujah, Adonai. Hallelujah, Adonai. Hallelujah, Adonai. Come and praise the Lord. Hallelujah, Adonai. Hallelujah, Adonai. Hallelujah, Adonai. Come and praise the Lord. And let everything that has breath Come and praise the Lord Praise Him with the cymbals, praise Him with the dance, praise Him with the shofar, praise Him with your hand, praise Him with the timbrel, praise Him with the harp, praise Him with the drum and the flute, and praise Him with your heart. Hallelujah, Adonai, hallelujah, Adonai, hallelujah, Adonai. Come and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Come and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Come and praise the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 Come and praise the Lord. 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 Baruch Adonai HaMivarach Le'olam Va'ed Baruch Adonai HaMivarach Le'olam Va'ed Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Ashir Bachar Banu Nikol HaAmin Venetan Lanu Et 
Torato Barukata Donai Notena Torah Amen. Bless Yahweh the Blessed One. Blessed is Yahweh the Blessed One for all eternity. Blessed are you, O Yahweh our Elohim, King of the universe, who has chosen us from all peoples and given us his Torah. Blessed are you, O Yah, giver of the Torah. Amen. If you would, let's go to um Revelation chapter 3, verse 7. We will do an introduction. There's a lot to cover in Philadelphia, but what I want to do is, is um, just let the Father lead. And as we go through this, this is one thing I do not want to do is, as you well know, since we've been since Sukkot, we may be at Sukkot when we finish up Laodicea, and that will be fine. And that would be probably very fitting that that would happen that way. But this is these seven congregations, again, um, are very, 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 very important in our lives. Um, they're there. For an example, uh, before I get into Philadelphia, we talked about Smyrna. Smyrna and Philadelphia, they were sister congregations, and they were pretty much identical. Uh, where you had the commendations or the positive things that were given to Smyrna was they were gratefully uh, they they was gracefully uh, bearing through suffering because they were highly persecuted and suffered also perseverance in their faith is what Philadelphia so they were both hated by their community hated by and were really kicked out by the Jewish people in their synagogues and we'll talk about that. Both times that you see the synagogue of Satan used, it was with these two groups of uh, congregations at Smyrna and Philadelphia. The criticisms, neither one. These are Out of all the seven, these are the two that didn't have any criticism. And this is why I was saying before that nobody wants to be persecuted. Nobody wants to go through heavy persecution. But I'm telling you, under heavy persecution, you watch your steps. Because you never know when your life may end through martyrdom or whatever. You definitely ain't going to be at the casinos. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be definitely watching your step doing because you never know at any moment whenever the Roman soldiers or somebody comes in and next thing you know, you're street lamps. You're, you're lit up because Nero had a bad day, you know, or one of the Caesars or whatever. And that's just the way these barbaric people were during that time. Also, the instructions... To Smyrna was be faithful unto death, and the instructions to Philadelphia is keep the faith. And these are the two big things that he's telling us today is through all of the turmoil and all of the uncertainties is that we need to be faithful unto death and keep the faith. Both of them are, the message ends up being really pretty much to them. But the promise and the reward was to Smyrna, they got a crown of life, and Philadelphia is going to be that we will have a place in Yahweh's presence. We will be a pillar. We will have a new name in the place of New Jerusalem, and we will be a people that will be functioning in the temple as, it, as it's going to talk about being pillars. Even though we know that at the very end of Revelation, it says that there is no physical temple, but we are that temple, and we will be the pillars. The bride will be the pillars of being in His presence in that time. So... Um, with that, I put up here, um, well, I say I did, Zeb did, he had to figure it out for me, uh, a map. So what I'm going to read a little bit, this is important, if you can see the map up here, you see down in the middle part of the map is a place called Susa. That sort of rings a bell, huh? There he is, see how he's pointing Susa. Like where have we heard that before, right? In the book of Esther. Yay. So anyway, but this little dotted line all the way up to Sardis, um, this is called a royal road, the royal road. And this was where the trade route was. And you can see that from the Persian area, they would always go. And, and where this thing ended up was right in the middle of all of the seven congregations. So what happens is, is there's a lot of missionary work that's happening along that trade route, but especially 
in Asia up there were these seven congregations. And it's, it's said here that this royal road was located and went right through or right there very, very close to Philadelphia. And so I'm going to read a little bit. And like I said, I wish I could tell you where I got this from, but I forgot, So, but I didn't make this up. But I want to give you a little history. Okay, Philadelphia was located on the Royal Road, the main east-west trade route into the interior of Asia. This is the reason why I put the map up there, because y'all can see exactly and you get a mindset. That covers a lot of area. That's a long ways across there in this trade route where people... <clears throat> because if you notice, you know where Egypt's at. You can see it down at the bottom of the Mediterranean. But when you go over here, when you go across Crete and all of that, you're in the Greece. And, and you're in the Rome. And, and there's just a big, big trade area during this time of what they would trade, all kind of stuff. And it says, because of this, it was built as a missionary city. It was designed as a show place for the Greek civilization in Asia to spread the Greek language. That's what Philadelphia was, was uh, built for or, or uh, started or populated. So they was trying to pursue or trying to push or spread the Greek language, their culture, their religion to the barbarians of the East. And that's what they called everybody that was on the right side of the map, was barbarian. In fact, there were so many temples in Philadelphia, it was known as Little Athens. So it shows you that even in Philadelphia, there was a lot of temples there. And you had Artemis, and uh, it may list some of them here, but you had a lot of little temples there. And um, so they had a lot of pagan worship. So here again, you see the people of Yeshua, the Messianic believers, right in the heart of a bad place. And there's a lot of persecution for that. Okay, in A.D. 17, which is 17 after Yeshua, okay, a massive earthquake struck and the city was literally destroyed overnight. The emperor Tiberius, because he was the Caesar at that time, Tiberius rebuilt the city and restored its beauty. But massive astroshocks continued to hit the city for decades. The result was that the majority of its people lived in the surrounding countryside. Few were brave enough to live in the city itself. So that ought to tell you something. Get out of them cities. Okay, Philadelphia congregation has experienced shaking also. So what was actually happening or happened in the physical was definitely happening in their lives. So they were being shook also. It says they had been through a seasons of persecution. It had been very, to a very, very hard season, and they felt weakened. And we're going to read that because Yeshua had a word for them, the most positive word given to all the seven congregations. And this is why we need to know in, in, in teaching that really what the word of Yeshua was giving them is, I know what you're going through. And this is one of the big words that the church of, or the congregations in Philadelphia means to me and you today. <clears throat> this is what it speaks to us. Yahweh has not forgotten us. Yeshua is still tending His congregations. It's just some will go through more persecution than others. Because here's the thing. The more righteous you are, the more persecution you're going to go through. Because see, when you were in Sardis, it said that you had the reputation of being alive, but you're dead. That's not good. But see, they, don't, they didn't have the persecution because they had mixed worship. They were able to worship everything. They were Hellenized pretty much. And that's the things that the Maccabeans fought was that Hellenization of saying, you know what, I can still believe Yahweh knows my heart you know, I can worship Yahweh, and I can worship, and I can... In other words, you know whenever Yeshua said, whenever they tried to trick Him and they gave Him the coin? I mean, they asked Him about, you know, serving Caesar and all that, and He said, give Him the coin, and He looked. He said, whose face is on there? And He said, Caesar, then give to Caesar's what Caesar's, to Yahweh's what Yahweh's. And that's what it means. But it doesn't mean that we are to, we are to start worshiping the things of Caesar. That's not what He was saying. 
And this is where some of the people, I believe, during Sardis, my opinion is, is this, is that these people with Jezebel worship, with the synagogues of Satan, when you start seeing these things happen, you start seeing um, people giving in to, because they don't want to be persecuted. Let me just say it like that. Nobody wants persecution. No, no kid, this is why peer pressure is so difficult among our teenagers. Nobody wants to be odd person out. They just don't want to be that. Until the very place to where when you're in a school system like they are today, I'm just being just as frank as I can be. When they're trying to tell you that you can't say he or she, and you can't use a pronoun, but go to the English class, English, how are you going to teach pronouns if there's no pronouns? Are they going to now take pronouns out of the English language? Absolutely they're not. They're going to tell you to circle them, you know, but yet you can't say them. Guys, this is the world we're living in. And, and I cannot believe that I'm here and, and, and this is where we're at. I, I just can't believe it. I, I can't understand whenever a Supreme Court justice don't even know what a woman is, and she is one. Because they don't want to say. And then they had an argument the other day with this lady, and they said, well, when is, when, when can you not do abortion? And, and she said, well, what? And then somebody said, well, what about two months out of the womb? Yes. What about when they're eight? Yes. What about when they're a teenager? Yes. In other words, see, she was so bent on not giving in, it was like, well, go kill your mama. I mean, my goodness, what, what is going on in the sick people's heads today to where people are trying to trick people and do all of these things? We see it. Now, look, is this anything new? Absolutely not. They did it to Yeshua. They was trying to trick him into saying, they brought an adulterous woman to him and says, what do you say? He said, I'll tell you what I say. Right in the sand. You, without sin, cast the first stone. <laughs> See? Because they were trying to trick him. Now, me personally, my opinion. I got a lot of opinions today. I'm sorry about that. Because I don't know what he wrote in the sand. I can't tell you if he did a poem. I can't tell you if he just drew an olive and top. But you know what? I almost thought he... This is what I think. By him writing in the sand, he wrote something in that sand that convicted them. And if she was a prostitute, he might have wrote when they were there with her because they didn't think that that was an issue, some of these people, because they still had pagan worship all around them when they would have temple prostitutes. I'm not saying that's what he wrote in the sand. I don't know. But I will promise you one thing, for them to drop their stones and walk away, whatever he wrote, it pricked them to their heart. This is sad, but this is why the Word of Yahweh has to be in us. We talked about this Wednesday night in our little Defenders of Our Faith class. Told our young people, just to remind you, to read Deuteronomy 28. If you hadn't already, make sure that it's read. See, what Yahweh says in Deuteronomy 28, He says... That, are you, that if you would be faithful in all of my commandments. See, this is where we run into problems. Oh, did you have something? Okay. And here's the thing. Guys, I'm just trying to be as honest as I can. And I'm talking about me first. The thing is, is can I stand up before Yahweh and say that I've been faithful in all of your commandments? If I can't say that, then guess what? I don't get all of the blessings. Because there's, but you know what? He is a merciful Elohim. To know that whenever we come into Torah, He gives us opportunities to grow. He's always, Tyler made a very good point. He says, whenever you read the curses, He was telling them in Deuteronomy 28, it's, it's when you first start, you will see that you, not, you don't need to do this. It, the judgments start very light. The penalties start very light. But as you go through to the end, it gets a lot worse. 
it's almost like I'm going to count to three. One, two, you know how sometimes we do it and to do your children and we train them how to count? Okay, in other words, they can do what they need to. Just don't never do the 10 because you, they're going to be doing a lot of bad things before you get to 10. But then it comes to a time to where Yahweh says, boom, it's done. So you can see the progression. But all that is is his, because he knows us and as we're growing and maturing, look, we shouldn't be in sin. We shouldn't be a people now entertaining sin. We should know that this is not right. We should know what to guard and keep. This is why I'm so strong about these, se uh, these seven congregations because you know why? They were having issues then and we're having issues today. Because what we have done is, is since the Reformation, heaven's sakes, they didn't know anything about Torah, but they knew that homosexuality was wrong. They knew it was sin. They knew that they couldn't marry. Not only did they know it was wrong, they knew you couldn't marry that way. I mean, we are running towards Sodom and Gomorrah with open arms. And the communities and the congregations, if you study a little bit and read about some of the church history in their news, the Methodist church and different ones right now, it is a huge fight right now of, of them leaving and vacating the organization as a whole because it's an organization. And that's a travesty that's happened. We should be the body of Messiah, not the body of an organization. Because these organizations, they have rules and they have all of these things that they have, but they have deviated. But do you know what? All you have to do is just go back to the first century. Look at Yeshua during His days. The Pharisees, Sadducees, they were organizations. They were no longer Torah observe it. They, they would do Torah observe it where it benefited them. You have people in all of these worshiping uh, tomorrow when they're worshiping, you're going to hear them. They, they will all say, I love Jesus. They're going to say that. They're going to go through that. that. And I don't think that they would not want to say that. That's why they're in their church or why they're there. But what I'm saying is, is this, is that the organization as a whole, what are, what are we going to do as people? Are we going to stay in that? Yahweh is calling people out of that system. He's been calling out of Babylon. He's been calling out for ages. So, in reality, what's happening, I believe that it's bittersweet. But I do know that the Father has got to bring heavy persecution down on the world to get us to start moving towards Yahweh. Because we will never cross the Red Sea. I wish we could do it. I wish I could stand up here and say with confidence that the body of Messiah through obedience would cross the Red Sea without Pharaoh breathing down his neck. But it's just never seemed to be that way that I've read it in, in Scriptures to where it seems to be something that's going to push them. Did you have something? Did you want to read is in context with the writing in the sand. Yes. This is from the prophet Jeremiah in 1713. It says, O oh, Yahweh, the hope of Israel, all who forsake you will be put to shame. Those who turn away on earth will be written down because they have forsaken the fountain of living water, even yod heh vav -Hey. Amen. Yeshua said he was the fountain of living water. That's right. And they rejected him by putting him to that test. Amen. So was he writing Jeremiah 17, 13 in the sand? Amen. Could was have. He writing their names because they have t rejected the fountain of living water. Amen. So this is one you may want to write out to this side in John 8, um, Jeremiah 17, 13. Correct. The reason why that is good, I'm glad you brought that up. We're not going to cover it today, but we will. And that's another thing, that Yeshua, what did he tell? It was the parable in Luke. And it was about the rich man and Lazarus. And because whenever we, when you read this, we're, we're going to be talking about the keys. He's going to talk about giving the keys to David, okay, in, in verse 7 of Revelation 3. But here is what Yeshua had to tell them. He was arguing with them because they were saying, we are Abraham's seed. That was the big argument. 
And you're going to see in here the synagogue of Satan. Now, we covered this before in, with Smyrna. And it was very, very common, if you remember, because Polycarp, whenever he saw one of his buddies that had went astray, uh, he said, well, don't you remember me? And he says, yeah, I know you, Satan. He called him Satan. So it was very common to say, get behind me, Satan. He wasn't trying to be ugly, but that was just because Satan, when you say synagogue of Satan or get behind me, Satan, it means it's one simple thing. You're, you're opposing Yahweh's plan. And that's all that Yeshua was saying to Peter. He wasn't calling him the devil, but he was saying you're opposing what Yahweh's plan is. And so when you see the synagogue of Satan for Smyrna and Philadelphia, that's what these Jews were doing. They were opposing Yahweh's plan and they were bringing heavy persecution. The reason why I'm going back over this some is because it, it's not going to make sense when we read it if you don't have this locked into your head. So what happened was, I don't know, in life, in life, for many, many years, even when the Jewish people, Israel, Judah, however you want to say all of the, okay, whenever they were under persecution and they, they were not in charge, they didn't have King David, okay, they had other people that ruled over them, they had found favor to be able to still have a temple and to still worship, okay, they had that favor. And so they had an exemption that was extended to them. Now, this was written whenever Rome was in charge. And Rome had given them that exemption. For whatever reason, Yahweh thing, the, you know, keep the peace, whatever. But I believe it was a Yahweh thing. Because he's still in captivity, he required them to worship him. And they had the freedom to worship Him the way He desired to be worshipped. Without the mixed worship. Roman didn't tell them like Alexander the Great did. He didn't tell them like Antioch and Epiphanes. He came in and said, you will not. When he set up Zeus in the temple, the abomination of desolation and all of that. Rome didn't do that. They said, you can worship your Elohim. But you can't stop others from worshipping theirs in, your, in this land because we own it. So you see this was what was happening. But here was the thing that happened here. And the book of Acts and 19 and all of that shows us how this works. <clears throat> whenever you were Hebrew roots, I'm going to say it that way, or whenever you was part of the way, whenever you had Yeshua as your Savior, the Jews at that time, and I'm just going to say the Jews here, who did not believe in Yeshua, was separating and the Romans didn't know that there were two different groups of people. But once they understood that there are two different groups of people, then the people that followed Yeshua didn't have that loophole. They didn't have a right any longer. They didn't have that um, little get-out-of-jail card or whatever. They didn't have that protection card. They were losing. So not only were now they being persecuted by the Romans... They're being persecuted by their own brothers because of that. Guys, it's going to happen again. It's going to happen again. It's going to happen when you get down to the end times before Revelation 12 kicks in full gear, before He takes us and removes us out into the wilderness, like it says in uh, Re Revelation 12, 17, how He's going to take those who keep the commandments and have the testimony of Yeshua, Whenever that happens, before that happens, there's going to be some persecution that happens. And it's going to rain on the just and unjust alike. Look, guys, if Satan is in the heavens warring, Jude talks about him warring up there over Moses' body. You know, me personally, keep him up there. Don't let him come down here. But we know that his spirit is down here and it is full flesh because there's demonic forces down here. We know that. He goes to and fro on the earth looking to who he can find. We know all of that. But there's one thing Satan is not. He's not Yahweh. He's not omnipresent. He's not omnipresent. Okay? He's not him. He does, he's still limited in his powers. Okay? He just don't have free reign. But he can do what he's created to do. 
But with that said, I'm just telling you, this is why I'm just going to go out and say this. These next six years are important. I'm just telling you, these next six years are important for us. If Yeshua tarries beyond that, then that's on Him, and that's great, and I'm good, and all of that. But I'm just telling you, where we're living, in the day that we're living in, these next six years, after we get through this Shemitah year, when we start year one, I'm telling you, it's on. It's on like pecan. I'm telling you. That might be a little Cajun. I don't know, pecan. But anyway, but it's, it's, it's on. I'm telling you. And it's, it's not... It, do I? I'm not date setting, but I'm just telling you, we're in a fight. We're in a fight in this country. They're in a fight in Ukraine, and they're in a fight in Africa. They're in a fight all over the place. Right or wrong, who does this or that? There's going to be wars and rumors of wars. It didn't say that they were just going to be rumors of wars. They said there, there were going to be wars. And they are people, China, that's right. I'm just telling you that we are in a huge fight. And if we don't get ourselves together, and this is one thing I'm hoping with HRN and with Revive, I'm hoping that we can stir enough people that they can understand the importance of community. We understand it here, and there's other communities that are connecting together that do understand. There's a lot of people out there looking for a place to go. They're really looking and praying for a place to go. We need to be praying for these people. I mean, everybody can't come here, but we can, we can fill up the rest of these chairs. And the thing about it is, and I'm just going to say this, and I hope you don't get your feelings hurt. Tammy's squinting. So you, might, you can go ahead and close your eyes if you want. Put a veil over you. <clears throat> Guys, the days of playing games is over. We need to be where we need to be on Shabbat. We just need to be there. Bar, hey, look, don't come in here with no fever. Don't come in here with COVID. We're not saying that. If you're sick, stay home. I'm for that. We know that. Amen? Because I believe in the Torah. And I, and I don't want anybody sick, but I want a day when we're all well and we're all here. But Yahweh is doing something. And I'm telling you, you do not want to be left outside when that door is shut. He's doing something in our lives today. And... We just, we need to take this seriously. Shabbat is important. I mean, it is so super important in our lives. I mean, it's a, it governs us. And it's so important that we need to strive to do it, everything in our power to be where we need to be. Is gas prices high? There is high, and it may get higher. What is the cost? That is, but you know what? I'm telling you, just me, because I'm out every day. It ain't slowed them people down at Walmart. I still have to part way out there and walk a half a mile to get in. So I can tell you that out of all of this, some people ain't slowing down. They're still, you know, whether it's 250 or 450. People are still rolling, just like, and I don't, went to buy groceries the other day. We bought a few things. Um, what well, was $182 is what I spent. And uh, three cans of hairspray. Um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That stuff's gone through the roof. So I'm going to I'm gonna have to get some uh, Gorilla Glue or something to just make my... And make my own hairspray. That, that might go up. Yeah, it's Gorilla Glue. I might do something to put Gorilla Glue in a spray bottle, and then it lasts longer. I'm going to need some Band-Aids. Y'all invest in Band-Aids after that statement. But I'm just saying, guys, and, 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 and we didn't buy our normal stuff, and it was $182. And uh, she gives me $175, so I had to... You know, well, I had to work a little bit to get the rest of it done. But, uh, no, anyway, I'm just saying this is where we're at. And, and our lives are changing. Our lives are changing. But do you know, Yahweh does these things to get our attention, 
to where we would understand what is the most important things in our life. It is to, it is to push us and to help us focus more on Him than on us and our stuff and all the things that we're doing in pleasure. It, it is to drive us and to push us to what's more important is really what I'm saying with that. <clears throat> and I know it's true. But, but you see what's happening? Go ahead. I know you said amen, ammo. Ammo? Look, leave ammo out of it. Everybody needs it. I don't even look at ammo. The only thing I go by is how many cents per bullet now. That's the only way I can justify getting ammo. Because yeah, ammo's through the roof. All this stuff is going through the roof. But let me just tell you this. Since I'm meddling and I'm into all of this stuff, all of this stuff is by design. All of this stuff, a taxing stuff like that, is by design. Making stuff go up, trying to sue this one and sue that one. And... Uh, the, the, the gun thing that happened in New York, we had a good Supreme Court thing that happened there. That was a great thing that happened for how in the world, man, I am meddling. <clears throat> Let me just say this. How stupid. Y'all can edit that if you want to. I have a concealed weapons permit. Let me tell you what that means. That means everybody in the government knows me. My fingerprints is out there. So whenever I had to get that little certificate, little thing looks like a driver's license, they fingerprinted me. They talked to the police chief here. They talked to the sheriff here. They talked to the FBI there. They talked to the CIA over here. They talked to the BATF, GQB, whatever these people are. Tobacco, I don't even know why they're talking to the tobacco people. I don't use tobacco. But anyway, they got the ATF group. And they are worried about me carrying a firearm? You're, you're looking at the wrong people. It's the ones that don't have... You should be... But yet, you want to push the envelope. This is what I'm telling you. Guys, the government... I've done it now. They don't fear... They don't fear the crooks. Because they know the crook's a the crook. They fear the law-abiding citizens that can think, that know what the Constitution stands for. Let me tell you this. Roe versus Wade was not a victory for the conservatives. It was a victory for the Constitution in the United States of America. That's what it was a victory for. Because it protected children, not conservatives. Not independence. And not, it's, not what, it's the Constitution. It's what the framers put in there to pursue life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness for the people. That's what it's about. That's right. They didn't sit there and say, you're a Baptist, Methodist, you're a Catholic, you're a crazy Pentecostal. They didn't say all that stuff. It didn't matter. They even put it in there that you can't have the Church of England. You have the freedom of religion. Good thing. You, you see, these framers, and do you know, I just believe this, these framers were led by the Holy Spirit to write these things down that they wrote down there. Because they covered a lot of bases because of all of the trouble that they had in England. The tyranny, they understood it. And they wrote it down. Guys, we need to wake up. Because if they're going to sit here and worry about somebody who's law-abiding, they are worried about the law-abiding people. Because they understand that it's the law-abiding people who can think. And eventually, they may, may, may get fed up with being pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed. Let me tell you something about a raccoon. If you ain't never fooled with a raccoon, don't fool one. Raccoon, when he's walking by, let him walk. Corner that dude. Corner that dude. You'll find out that that's a beast. I'll tell you something, my dad, as funny as can be. My dad, he was working for Uncle Mildred one day. you got to realize now, this is back in the 30s, the 1930s. Can y'all picture that? The 1930s. They walk everywhere. You know, they didn't have no car. They walked everywhere. They didn't even have a horse. They didn't have a cow or a goat. They had a few chickens, and that was about it. <clears throat> there was this lady who, was, who lived in that area, and she had a pet coon, a pet raccoon, about a 40-pounder pet raccoon. 
And once a week, she would walk to Uncle Mildred's store, and she would buy that cone a candy bar. And she'd give that cone a candy bar, and he would take it in the back, climb up on the sacks, and eat that candy bar. Daddy made the mistake one day of walking in there on that cone with his candy bar. And it was not pretty. Daddy walked in that little dark room, and he heard this growling. And he didn't know what had happened. And that coon, that coon thought he was after his candy bar. He come unleashed on my dad. My dad liked to tore out every wall trying to get out of that room. But you know what? He didn't get that coon's candy bar. So I'm just telling you, people can be cornered to a place to where they don't want to fight. Do you know that people, you let people run over you long enough, eventually... It, you're, you're done. You're just flat done. And this is what's happening in our society today. People are flat done. But now let me tell you this. People are flat done on the other side too. That's why they're doing what they're doing. They want me and you to behave, but they can do what they want to do. Okay? This is the, this is the world we're living in. This is why it's so important that we need to know what is Yahweh doing in the land today. And I know that He is stirring this pot. And I'm saying Yahweh's stirring the pot. He's trying to get His people doing what we said that we would do. When we accepted Yeshua as our Savior and we said all the things that you said we will do. But let me tell you what we've done is, as a people as a whole, we have... Let me see if I can say this right. We have read the words. We have read the words that He has said. We have not heard the words. We have not Shema. We have not listened with the intent to obey. We read them and we go about because, there again, nobody wants to die and go to hell because it's hot. You think it's hot in Mississippi right now? It's really hot down there. So the thing is, you don't want that. That's what I'm saying. People, they have that mindset. So I want to do just enough to keep me out of the furnace. Guys, you can't do enough to keep you out of the furnace. You've got to trust in Him 100%. That's the only thing that's going to keep you out of the furnace of affliction in that regard. Amen? So I'm going to close with this because I didn't even get into my message. But this is what Philadelphia really, really was about. It was about a people who was highly persecuted. And I want to throw that out there because I really wanted it to sink in in this introduction, and there may be an introduction to it next week. If we're persecuted for righteousness, snake, you're doing something right. Okay, we're doing something right. When we're not persecuted, we need to really watch what's happening to us. Are we blending into the society and the world? We as a people, we need to be about our Father's business. We are to be a light. We are to be witnessing. There will come a time if He tells us to do something different. But right now, we need to continue to pray. And let me just say this in closing too. There is a coach. Uh, his, his case is coming up this week. He's the one that was praying on his own, on the field. He had his players with him. He wasn't doing it. And they, now he's, he has his case, need to be praying for him and be praying that that's big. It's, it, it is, it's big. That's right. For the religious freedom. He wasn't doing it and he didn't tell the players they had to do it. He said, I'm going out there to pray because, and he was trying to be a light where he was at. So, but they got all of these rules that's bent here and there. Be praying for him also this week. Amen. Okay, let's pray. Father, we do just thank you for this opening portion. And I just pray, Father, that we, as we get into the church or the congregation of Philadelphia, that we can see the parallels of what they were going through. They were being persecuted not only by Rome, but by their own brothers who didn't believe exactly like they believed. They believed in the Torah, but they didn't believe in Yeshua. And, that, and that's a huge issue. And Father, so in these days that we're in today, these, not only right now, I'm talking about these days, these next six years, the rest of this year and these next six years are very, 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 very important. I believe that by the Spirit. I'm hearing that from other ministers. So, Father, I just pray that we would be discerning, that we would not move unless you tell us to move, but that we would be 
praying and vigilant in everything that we do, guarding and keeping our children and our family from the enemy, doing the portions and the things that we could do right now. So, Father, continue to bless your people here. Bless all of those who are gathering on your day. Father, as you're bringing us together, Father, spiritually, before you can bring us together physically. So, Father... We all want to just lift up Yeshua today. We've been lifting Him up. We praise You. We thank You, Father, for our high priest that's working overtime for us in Yeshua's name. Amen and amen. Thank you, guys. We just want to briefly share, too, that the, um, this is a Shemitah year, and it was 49 years ago that this happened with the Road v. Wade, the Road versus Wade. So that, that cannot be a coincidence. If we don't see the Father's fingerprints all over that, that seven complete cycles of seven, that it, therefore it was enacted in a Shemitah year as well, right? So seven groups of seven. So anyway, um, being, it's a year of release. So being released back to the states to now we can fight on a more local level and stand up for, the, for life on a local level and be there for the mothers who get in situations. But we've got to teach and be a light, right, for Yahweh's standard so that we aren't just managing symptoms, but we stop the sin in its tracks. Amen. So year of release, we got released from that. Now there's still more work to do. Then there's a Yovel, right? Yeah, I just wanted to say this, uh, you know, piggybacking on what you just said. The reason, one of the reasons that there's been so much pushback on this thing is because the federal government has had almost complete control for the longest time. If you know th some things about the Civil War, it really started out as a state's rights thing. So if the states now have the means to pass laws that are pro-life, now add the Second Amendment and the First Amendment to that. States will say, hey, you know what? We're not down with what you want to do and bringing the who in and then allowing UN peacekeepers to, and by the way, this almost happened May 22nd. So this is a big loss for the other team because they're saying if these people and on the state level realize that the Constitution gave the states rights to be able to supersede something the federal government is trying to push down their throats, uh, that is not in their game plan agenda. So this is a wake-up call where Yahweh is saying, don't lose the openings I'm giving you. So anyway, there's a lot to just pay attention. Things are noteworthy. It is very noteworthy that this happened yesterday. This is noteworthy that it happened after 49 years. So it's, things are just noteworthy. We're not say, we're just saying, because you know what? We have to be ready. No, Douglas and I were talking about this the other night. We have to be ready today because you are not promised tomorrow. We could die today. So we need to be ready no matter what. So this isn't crying wolf, but there, the prophets do begin to warn when the birth pangs start. Yeshua also told us when these birth pangs start, just pay attention. Stay awake. Be prepared because it matters. And when Mark was talking about, this is just post-message message, I guess. When Mark was talking about um, in the Sabbath, we need to be where we are. Sandra's favorite verse is at the, at the end of every email is going to be uh, Hebrews 10, 23 through 25. And it says, gather so much more. Do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together so much more as you see the day approaching. The day is approaching. So you go to Ezekiel 20. Just read Ezekiel 20 if you get a chance. Because he goes through and he's talking about how I brought my, I made a covenant. I brought my people out. They rebelled. I gave them statutes, ordinances, commandments, and my Sabbaths to set them, to sanctify them. And they rebelled. And you just keep going through, through chapter 20 over and over and over. I, I stopped after three times where he said, and I gave them my Sabbaths, plural, your weekly and your festival Sabbaths. I gave you my Sabbaths, and you rebelled against me. It shows you that you're my people. So if we can, we, that's what we need to do. So much more as we see the day approaching. Yes, be my people. Yes, and if you are his people, there is a sign 
that you are as people. Amen? All right. Shabbat shalom. All together, sound the great shofar for our freedom. Raise the banner to gather our exiles and gather us together from the four corners of the earth. Praised are you, O Yahweh, who gathers in the dispersed of your people, Israel. <laughs> Prayer for the United States of America all together. Abba, Father, giver of life, we pray for and entrust the United States of America to your loving care. You are the rock on which this nation was founded. You alone are the true source of life, liberty, and blessings. We cry out for this land to be reclaimed for your glory. May it be that you will dwell among your people. Send your spirit to touch and open the hearts of our nation and its leaders to seek your will and your ways. Grant us the ability and courage to stand for the truth. And may we be that righteous nation you have called us to be. We ask this in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah. Amen. Prayer for the peace of Jerusalem, Psalm 122, all together. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of Yahweh. Our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem that is built as a city that is compact together, to which the tribes go up, even the tribes of Yahweh. An ordinance for Israel to give thanks to the name of Yahweh, for there thrones were set for judgment. The thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. May peace be within your walls and prosperity within your palaces. For the sake of my brothers and my friends, I will now say, may peace be within you. For the sake of the house of Yahweh our Elohim, I will seek your good. Berkat HaKonim, the blessing of the priest. Yevarechecha Adonai May Yahweh bless you and keep you. May Yahweh cause His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May Yahweh lift up His favor unto you and give you shalom. Amen. And it's time again for the Kiddush, the blessing over the wine. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Borei pri hagafen, Amen. Blessed are you, O Yahweh our Elohim, King of the universe, who brings the fruit of the vine, and for giving us Yeshua the Messiah, who said, I am the vine, you are the branches. And the blessing over the bread. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, hamotzi lechem min haaretz. Amen. Blessed are you, O Yahweh our Elohim, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth, and for giving us Yeshua the Messiah, who said, I am the bread of life. It is Shabbat, thank the Lord. It is Shabbat. 